What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Sector for Nerds. I'm Ryan Brower and today I'm here to give you guys my list for the top five villains in Star Wars. For this list, I'm ranking the villains based on not just the coolness factor, although that does play a key role in my decisions, but their arcs as well. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, let me know in the comments below who your favorite Star Wars villains are and why. Just remember that this is my list so you guys don't have to agree with it, but I ask that you guys Respect my opinion as I will respect yours. You guys ready? All right, here we go. Starting us off at number five, we've got Emperor Sheev Palpatine, or should I call him Darth Sidious? A surprise, to be sure, but a welcome. Once a humble senator from Naboo who wasn't suspicious at all, there was definitely no way that that guy was a bad person. Now they will elect a new chancellor, a strong chancellor. One who will not let our tragedy continue. And you, young Skywalker. We will watch your career with great interest. You don't need guidance, Anakin. In time, you will learn to trust your feelings. Then you will be invincible. Do you ever hear the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? It's ironic. He could save others from death but not himself. Anyway, Palpatine was the ultimate puppet master of the Skywalker saga, always in the shadows waiting for his moment to strike. After he became Chancellor, Palpatine orchestrated the Clone Wars and played both sides to expend everyone's resources and paint a bad picture of the Jedi. As the war went on, the public began to hate the Jedi more and more. After years of fighting, the Jedi being spread across the galaxy, and Anakin growing stronger in the Force, Palps knew it was his time. He managed to get Anakin to become Darth Vader, turn the Jedi's own army against them, wiped most of them out, and became Emperor of the Galaxy. He would remain Emperor until his demise in Return of the Jedi when Anakin finally brought balance to the Force. But wait, the story's not done. He came back in the Rise of Skywalker. Wait, he came back as a clone? Wait, it's a clone body but with Palpatine's essence transferred into that clone? Huh, wish that was explained in the movie cause you know it's only the biggest villain in the galaxy returning. But you know what, at least they spent all those years playing planning for him to come back and be Ray's grandfather. And then it came to episode nine and JJ pitched me the film and was like, oh yeah, Palpatine's granddaddy. And I was like, awesome. And then two weeks later, he was like, oh, we're not sure. So it kept changing. What the actual f in all seriousness though, Palpatine is one of those villains you love to hate because he's so evil. Shout out to Ian McDermott for playing the character flawlessly for so many years. Funny enough, George Lucas once said, Ian is one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet and is nothing like the Emperor. Also, give a quick shout out to Sam Witwer, who does a really good Palpatine impression as well, voicing him for several things like Star Wars Rebels, The Force Unleashed, the Battlefront games, and even the new Lego Star Wars game. At number four, Darth Vader. Probably the most iconic character in all of Star Wars. When Vader first appears on screen, he somehow manages to look scary and cool at the same time. Vader is a villain that you go from hating to sympathizing with. In A New Hope, he kills Obi-Wan, and that moment made me hate Vader. In The Empire Strikes Back, he reveals to Luke that he's his father, a moment that shocked me. You mean to tell me that the bad guy is the good guy's father? And then, re then in Return of the Jedi, you feel sympathy for Vader when Luke tries to bring him back to the light. And then when he does turn good and then dies a few minutes later, you do feel bad. The story of Darth Vader slash Anakin Skywalker is a tragedy indeed. Now when it comes to Vader as a warrior, he's a badass. From reading books to and comics to watching Star Wars Rebels and especially Rogue One, Vader has shown that he's one of the most powerful people in the galaxy, though his powers were limited thanks to the suit he was forced to wear after Obi-Wan cut him in half. At number three, General Grievous. Now you may be asking why I have Grievous so high or why I have him on my list at all. It's not because of the Clone Wars animated series because most of the time he was on screen, he was losing. It's not because of Revenge of the Sith, even though he was pretty badass in that movie. It's because of the Clone Wars micro series where I was first introduced to the character. His first bit of dialogue in that show is the most badass thing I've ever heard Grievous say.
He would then take on five Jedi and absolutely kick their butts. They stood no chance and it made Grievous look awesome. Grievous never lost in the micro series. He was successful in all his missions and would pull out new tricks every time. He was by far the biggest threat in that show. I can't say I felt the same about him in the Clone Wars animated series. Now don't get me wrong, in the later seasons they made him feel like a bigger threat, but not compared to the micro series. However, my favorite Grievous look in all of Star Wars was that shot at the beginning of the first Siege of Mandalore episode that we got for all of two seconds. Blink and you miss it. Could you imagine if this was the Grievous look we had all the time? Mix that with his skills from the micro series and put that in Clone Wars now? Oh my gosh, I'd go crazy. At number two, Grand Admiral Thrawn, everyone's favorite Chiss. Timothy Zahn is a freaking genius for writing the Heir to the Empire trilogy. They were books that came out during the time where there wasn't new Star Wars movies coming out. So many fans were on the edge of their seats for more Star Wars content and this blew their minds. Introducing us to incredible new villains such as Thrawn, Captain Pellian, and Rook. Oh yeah, and let me also point out that Mara Jade's first appearance was also in this book as well. Thrawn is an incredibly smart person who rarely loses. This was proven even more when the character made his debut in Star Wars Rebels, voiced by Lars Mikkelsen, who did an incredible job. Thrawn was always 10 steps ahead of his opponents, and just when you think you figured him out, you realize how far behind you actually are. His whereabouts are currently unknown, but I'm assuming somewhere in the unknown regions. Gosh, if only there was a way we could find out for sure. Come on, Dave. At number one, Darth Maul, a Zabrak from the planet Dathomir who was taken by Darth Sidious as a child and raised to become his apprentice. Maul made his first on-screen appearance in The Phantom Menace, and at the time I thought he was a cool villain, the way he looked, his double lightsaber, etc. But then he died in the same movie, so it wasn't like I became obsessed with his character. And then we find out years later that he's not dead and he's coming back in the Clone Wars animated series. My first reaction was, well this doesn't make any sense, he died. So then he comes back in season four and I'm like, all right, well, this is, this is a cool story, but I still don't understand why he was brought back. And then season five happened. And at that point, all the episodes with Maul were so damn good. I completely understood why George wanted him back. There were so many layers to his character that we haven't yet seen before and bringing him back for the Clone Wars gave us a chance to explore those layers. First off, he's a talker. Wouldn't have known that from The Phantom Menace. Maul is voiced by the wonderful and talented Sam Witwer, who does an excellent performance as the character. I feel like everything Maul says has a purpose behind it. He doesn't just talk for the sake of talking. Second, he's a great general slash tyrant figure. He comes up with a brilliant plan to take over Mandalore and claim the throne for himself without drawing the attention of the Jedi, and it worked. Though the thing that's sad about Maul is he's only able to gain minimal success. In The Phantom Menace, he's reaching some power, and then he gets knocked down. Clone Wars, he rebuilds himself and that power, and then he gets knocked down again. In Rebels, it's like third time's the charm, right? Nope. Freddie Prince Jr. once compared Maul to Sisyphus, the man who was cursed for eternity to roll a big boulder up a hill, and right as he would get it to the top, it would fall down and he would have to start over again and continue this for eternity. Sam Witwer's comparison to that is this. Maul has always been in this cycle, where he's been obsessed with the same things and wanted the same things, but he hasn't been able to think or see his way out of that cycle. When Maul came back in Star Wars Rebels for the season 2 finale called Twilight of the Apprentice, I was amazed. It was after that episode that Maul shot up my list of favorite characters. I don't normally like villains that much, as I'm more of a hero person, but when it comes to Maul, there's so much to his character I can't help but admire and appreciate the guy. I think while he is a villain, he does do selfless acts, but in those acts he uses selfish motivations to get there. For example, Maul wanting to take Ezra as his apprentice is not a bad thing. It's a selfless act to be able to pass on one's teachings to another. It's even more selfless when he tells him that we can walk this path together not just as friends but as brothers. Maul in that moment is trying to fill a void not having his brother Savage in his life anymore. The problem with this is he's doing it out of a selfish motivation and that's for him and or Ezra to take revenge on the people like Palpatine who have ruined Maul's life. Again, to that cycle he's stuck in. It's really a tragedy if you think about it. When it came to his death, I'm 
glad Obi-Wan was the one to kill him as I wouldn't have felt comfortable with anyone else doing it and I'm glad Dave Filoni felt the same way. And by the way, everyone who complains about that fight only being three moves doesn't understand that whole scene and what's actually going on. Go watch Sam Witwer or Dave Filoni talk about it and then maybe you'll have a better understanding of the story. I mean, heck, I can even make my own video on it and I just might because I see so many people complaining about that fight and it annoys the crap out of me. So that's my list for the top 5 Star Wars villains. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with others. Also, let me know in the comments below who your favorite Star Wars villains are, and I will see you guys next time.